So triggers run when you do things like insert, update, I could even say delete here if I want to check for all of all, all the operations that can modify the data in a table. There's we, you, we don't do triggers on select because select just reads from a table, it doesn't change anything. Usually we write triggers to make sure that when people change things, they're not changing things we don't want them to. Um, but one, there's two tables that you get in a trigger, and I'm just going to put insert, update, and delete. There's there's inserted, let's do this, select splat, whoops, from inserted, if I can spell it right, and I'm going to select splat from deleted. Okay, these two tables, inserted and deleted, they show up. They're just magically there, provided by SQL Server when in the context of a trigger. Okay, and depending on what kind of operations you're doing to the table, the values of these tables change. And so let's just let, let's have a little fun with this just to demonstrate what's going on. I'm gonna I'm gonna rerun. Let's see. Let's let's just start clean. I like starting clean. Let's start clean. Uh, let's do a insert into uh, customers. Um, and let's see. It was uh, customer ID, contact name and company name values and let's do just a new customer so new CU I hope I haven't used that ID yet and uh, let's do Billy Bob and Billy Bob works at Newmont as well so new Mont okay now watch when I, when I run this again we have this trigger installed so so I could just run this whole thing or I can just highlight this part let's just highlight this part run it and notice, oh, okay, we get these these tables here. All right, and the first one, if you notice, is from inserted. Again, this code executed when we did our insert, because I told it I wanted this code to execute on an insert. If we look at the insert, this is is this not what I just inserted into the customers table? I, I explicitly said the customer ID is new CU, company name is Newmont, contact name Billy Bob. But then those other columns take on their default values, which are all null, and they're nullable columns. So the inserted table has what I inserted. That's kind of nice. Uh, notice the deleted table. We didn't delete anything. Okay, so this table is empty. All right, so that's an insert. Let's do an update. Update customers. Uh, let's see, I should probably just start out new. Update, except I want to grab this customer ID, new CU. So let's update customers. Set contact name equal to Jamie Jamie. Where customer ID equals the one that we just inserted. Okay, so now, you'd be wise to pause the video and think, you know, I wonder what's going to be in the inserted table. What's going to be in the deleted table on this update? Notice there's no updated table. All right, I can't say select splat, oops, from updated. It doesn't exist. Okay? So you'd be wise, pause the video and think for a minute. What, what's going to happen here? I'm going to run this. Let's see what happens. Ooh, look. Both the inserted table and the deleted table, both of them have data. All right, the inserted table contains the value that I'm trying to insert. This is what the row looks like. This is the new data. And look at the deleted table. This is the data I'm deleting. And notice I only changed the contact name, but I am theoretically deleting Billy Bob out of the database, putting Jamie Jamie in here. But it happens as a complete row instead of just that one column. So, so there you go. The inserted table contains the new values, and the deleted table contains the old. Now, hopefully it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to say... Uh, let's delete from customers where uh, customer ID equals the one we just inserted. So hopefully you can intuitively imagine what's going to happen here as far as what what the uh, results will be. So I'm going to run this, and hopefully this is what you expected. Customer ID is new CU. This is the row we're deleting. We're not inserting anything, but we did delete this. So anyway, there's the inserted tables and the deleted tables that magically are provided via SQL whenever you create a trigger. And we can use these to do some constraint checks, as I'm going to show you in, in the next videos.